Have you ever heard of white room torture? Like the title says, it's a form of torture where an individual is placed in an environment completely devoid of stimulation. There's no sound, there's no smell or natural light, and the only color in the room is white. The walls are white and a few pieces of furniture are also completely white. The inmate placed in this environment would also wear white clothes, blending completely with the surroundings. This may sound harmless at first. After all, white is a popular color, right? But in reality, being confined to such an environment for extended periods of time can break the mind. And that is because the human mind has evolved in an interdependence with the environment. Our eyesight, our ability to hear, and our senses of touch, smell, and taste are constantly picking up signals from various environmental stimuli. When such stimuli do not exist for long periods of time, our senses begin to dull. Like for example, we start losing our eyesight and our mind goes crazy. When looking at photos of such torture chambers, I was surprised to notice that it don't look very different from modern day minimalistic homes. These homes are painted almost entirely white, sometimes beige. They are sleek, unblemished, and devoid of any personal touch. And so it got me thinking, in pursuing aesthetics, are we inadvertently converting our cherished living spaces into prisons of our minds? And while there has been a lot of discussion around clutter and how living in cluttered spaces can raise our anxiety levels, I don't think enough attention has been given to personalization and its positive impact on our mental well-being. Because somehow in our pursuit to get rid of clutter, we have also dispensed ourselves from the core. And why does personalization matter so much? If we look at the history of human evolution, people from around the world, from different cultures, continents, and time periods have placed an inordinate amount of effort into adorning their homes with paintings, highly decorated textiles, and beautifully ornate objects. If you give children pens and a white room, the walls will very likely be covered in drawings. Public bathroom stalls always end up being covered in drawings and messages. Even prison walls become canvases for art. Now, why do people bother with such frivolous activities? Because the personalization of our spaces can soothe a couple of innate human needs. We have a need to express our identity. Just as we wear clothes that reflect our personality, our homes are an extension of ourselves. Through decorations, we tell stories of who we are, where we come from, and what's important to us. Objects often have memories attached to them. A vase might be a gift from a loved one, while a painting might remind us of a special trip. These items help us remember and connect with our past. Every photo frame, piece of art, knickknack we own often carries a piece of our story. These aren't mere objects. They are fragments of memories, echoes of laughter and tears, and markers of life milestones. We have a need to express our creativity. Designing a space gives us a canvas to show our unique sense of style. It's a form of art where we're both the artist and the audience. We also have a need for comfort and well-being. When we're surrounded by the things we love, we feel more relaxed and comfortable. This is crucial for our emotional well-being. Consider the comforting feel of a plush cushion after a taxing day, or the reassuring warmth of a rug under your feet on a cold morning. These aren't just accessories, they provide a sensory experience that can elevate our mood. Additionally, how we design our homes can deeply influence how we feel. Bright colors can uplift our mood, while certain layouts can promote relaxation. And then there's the unmistakable charm of plants. Numerous studies have reiterated the benefits of having greenery in our living spaces. The mere presence of a potted plant or a vase of fresh flowers can drastically enhance our sense of relaxation. They connect us to nature, provide a sense of calm, and even purify the air we breathe. So when we sideline them in the name of minimalistic design, aren't we missing out on these holistic benefits? At this point, I think it's important to highlight a fundamental truth. Minimalism at its core philosophy 
isn't flawed. It's a conscious movement away from mindless consumption. It's about valuing quality over quantity, cherishing what we have, and making mindful choices. And that's commendable. However, the challenge arises when this philosophy is misinterpreted by design and minimalism is translated into spaces that are void of emotion, character, and individuality. As we delve deeper into the world of design and decor, I think it's essential to prioritize our fundamental human needs over any strict formal design language. Because a real home is more than an expression of one specific design aesthetic. It's a treasure trove of memories. It's a reflection of our identity. It's an expression of our creativity. And most importantly, it's a sanctuary that offers us genuine comfort and rejuvenation. All right, we are at the end. Do hit the like button and if you like this video, I think you will like my video about nostalgia. There, I go into a lot more detail about how the objects of decor that carry our stories contribute to our overall sense of well-being. It's about valuing... It's about... It's about valuing... Blah, blah, blah. It's about valuing... It's about valuing quality over quantity. It's about valuing... It's about valuing... It's about valuing quality over quantity, cherishing what we have and making mindful choices. And that's commendable.